Beginning on Dado Podcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Odd Dad Out Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host, the, you won't believe this shit, <laughs> Adam Higgins, the Odd Dad Out. And this is the show where I share my random crap going through my head, weird stories. I make fun of some weird assholes in the news. And I tell you about a podcast that I think you need to check out because, like I've said a million times... Sharing is caring. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so here's what's what what's happened. And and there's really no other way to <laughs> no other way for me to put it. Um you hadn't noticed from the title. I managed to crack my ribs eating popcorn. Which when you look at the great scheme of things and ways I've injured myself and and illnesses and things that have occurred uh, because of me and my what the hellness, um, it, it doesn't seem that out of place. So, <clears throat> to tell this story, I have to rewind a little bit because if you have been listening to the show for a little while, and if you're new, thank you for joining me. This. This probably will give you a good example of of normal show, my what the fuck stories, and all the rest of the bullshit. Uh, but so I got to rewind because again, go back a few weeks. I've been sick. I've been sick for because me and my fucked health about a month now, give or take. And <clears throat> so it started with just rewind it all. Started with just a cough, no big deal cough. Turned into a um, big bronchitis flare-up, which sucks. I've had them before. It is the bane of my existence. And you know, I, I went through a cycle of antibiotics and cough medication and anti-inflammatories. All this stuff. Get through all of that. On the mend, I'm, I'm doing better. And so get to last Friday. I'm through all of my meds. Every I, I finished all of the last of my medications last Wednesday. I'm through all of that. I'm finally starting to feel normal. Uh, the side effects of all those medications, because those medications had some bitching side effects, and God, they sucked. But all of that is over. I'm finally feeling normal. I've still got a little bit of a cough because, you know, there's still like, you know, build up and phlegm and whatever the crap in my chest. I still got some of that that I'm kind of clearing out. It's, you know, I had chest congestion. It happens. You still got to clear out the rest of the congestion. Not a big deal. What is a big deal is the fact that by this point, I've basically had a cough continuously for about a month. And it went through waves of, you know, uh, improvement and getting worse and better and worse, but it was constant. Come up to last Friday and it's decided, Oh, you remember how you were like, Hey, you got through this one without anything major happening. Just, you know, a bronchitis flare up. Well, if you rewind to, <laughs> My last bronchitis flare up, which was late 2017, that particular illness stretch of a month, two months, resulted in two cracked ribs because I had been coughing extremely heavily for about a month. Bring me to last week, and guess what happens? I start feeling that familiar pinch in my side every time I take a deep breath, every time I cough to try and clear my chest of, if not cracked, definitely bruised ribs. And it is one of those things where because of my previous experience, I know the signs just like when my bronchitis flares up, 
I know the, the, the physical pain triggers that tell me, Hey, this is what's going on. So I can be, you know, I, I can, I, I'm going to say self-diagnose, but I know what's going on based on the way I feel. And I feel that very familiar pain from the last time I had a cracked rib. And, but it's not that bad. It's just, it's, it's a minor pain. It's an inconvenient, you know, this hurts, coughing hurts, taking deep breaths hurts. But I remembered all of my treatment from last time. And you know, if you've never had a broken rib or a cracked rib or bruised ribs or anything, here's a nice little warning for you. You can't do shit about it. You can't. I've looked it up. The doctors basically told me the only treatment for, unless you had like a car accident where they've got to reset your shit, you know, you took a, you know, a sedan to the chest or something and you've got cracked ribs that way. There's nothing they can do for you. It is pain meds and rest and breathing exercises to keep your lungs inflated to avoid pneumonia. That's it. You're trying to avoid a lung infection from the pressure of, of misaligned ribs while they're healing. So yeah, lots of a leave and uh, breathing. You got to do these like whole, take big, deep breaths and fill your chest and hold it. And like, like 10 of these like deep breathing exercises every hour to keep, make sure your lungs stay inflated so that you don't get any uh, upper respiratory infection. Yeah, there's your little medical lesson for the day. Well, I'm like, okay, I know what I need to do. Start doing my breathing. Start popping a leave. And I'm all right. I was like, okay, I know what I need to do. Stay on my stuff. And all right, I got to sleep upright, which honestly I wasn't doing. I actually, last time this happened, we bought a like one of those big armrest uh, pillow things for me so that I could sleep upright. Is it like prop me up? Because if you lay down while you're sleeping, then like the whatever the hell stuff settles and you end up getting a lot of, of crap built up in your chest. And let's just say every morning for the weekend, I was waking up like an 80 year old man with a big heavy cough to clear my chest. So I went, but you know, I, I knew what was going on and I was, I was taking it easy. I wasn't doing any, I mean, it was the weekend. I didn't have a lot of heavy work. I was, you know, relative. I mean, we had a Super Bowl party on on Sunday. Technically, my sister came over, so you know, we get all this stuff, and we're we're hanging out, and we're doing all this fun stuff. You know, I'm I'm taking my my leave for the pain, keeping everything under control. You know, taking it easy as I can for the most part, because weekends are still you know family busy time. And again, we had you know company coming over, so cleaning house and all that stuff. But I got through all that and Sunday, all the way Friday through Sunday, I was all right. It hurt. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie. It, it hurt, but I knew it was manageable. And then Monday happened. So you know, jump back to Sunday, Sunday, we we're making all the food, made popcorn and we had chips and all this stuff. I haven't made popcorn in a while. And I'm one of those, I make popcorn on the stovetop with like, you know, just raw kernels and, and oil and, and shaky, shaky the pot. So with, you know, but what are the, one of the side effects of fresh popcorn is fresh popcorn kernels and skins and all of that stuff. Well, you start getting some popcorn seeds stuck in your throat and you start coughing and well, what caused this whole rib problem in the beginning coughing. And again, I I didn't, if I didn't mention this before, you can in fact cough yourself into a broken rib. It's actually relatively common. And I guess it's common enough for me that it's happened to me at least twice now, Uh, technically three times, because last year it happened on one side, kept going, then cracked the other side. So once I started having another coughing problem, I, I, I was more than a little concerned because every cough hurt like a son of a bitch. And yeah, I just, I, I, I did not want to deal with that because I know what happens. Like I said, last time 
it spread. That's not something you want to spread. And I missed a week of work. Well, actually, I was out two weeks last time because of it. So, yeah, I didn't want this shit again. Again, I, so I'm taking my meds. I'm doing all my stuff. Sunday, I'm still all right. And I think Sunday I had more to do with. I w- was more active Sunday. I didn't rest as much as I should have. But come Monday, it's it's kind of back to normal, you know, hanging out with the little boys in the morning. We're you know, having snack time. And I was like, you know what? We haven't had popcorn in a while. Let's go ahead and make up some more popcorn because the boys love popcorn. And they kind of missed, you know, we used to have popcorn like every other day. And so I made some more popcorn. And of course... More popcorn means more popcorn kernels and more popcorn skin stuck in my throat. And I had a bitch of a coughing fit that I hadn't had like that since before all of the medication that I had from this whole sick that I've just gone through. So I had this massive coughing fit basically just because of a stupid piece of popcorn stuck in my throat. And through this coughing fit, I felt my ribs pop. I just felt that, you know, this, it went from the might just be bruised and a little beat up from all the coughing and everything to nope, that was the break right there. That's it. They just went, you know, snap, crackle, pop. There goes my ribs. And mother fuck does that hurt. But like I said before, there's nothing you can really do about it. It's just take some med some meds for pain and and try not to do any more damage. And at this point, I've cleared the popcorn out of my throat, so it's not a big deal, you know, chugging Gatorade and all this sort of stuff. Like, okay, I've cleared that out. But now the damage is done. It is escalated. Now it hurts more than it has the whole weekend. And every breath hurts, every cough because every time I take a deep breath, I cough. I've got to do my breathing exercises, so I'm doing my breathing exercises, and the breathing exercises hurt my ribs, which then makes me cough, which then hurts my ribs. Isn't this a wonderful cycle of pain? So, I go through all of this, but I'm I'm doing what I need to do. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay upright. I'm trying to not exert myself too much. I'm not doing any heavy lifting. I'm telling the boys, hey take it easy. You can't lay with me right now because you're too heavy. And they they hate that because I'm, it seems like I'm everybody's favorite damn pillow. Everybody wants to lay on me, especially the little boys, except the little boys are heavy. And, and Sam loves to just flop down on my chest. And he is, he's bruised my ribs before just like flopping his head straight on my chest. It sucks. But like I told him, like, no, you can't lay on me right now. My ribs are hurt. You can't do that. So I was, I was trying to minimize the strain. Come Tuesday, I'm like, fuck, this hurts, but I cannot miss work again. I was just out like two weeks ago from all of the, the sickness and all the crap that I'm going through, the bronchitis flare up and the doctor visit and all that from before. So... I'm like, no, I can't call out of work. I'll just let him know, hey, here's what's going on. So I get to work. Now, if if you follow along for long enough, you know, I have a set work schedule. I'm off the same two days every week. Everybody comes in at the same time every day. So I don't even look at my schedule. I don't. They they email the schedule out every week. I don't look at it because I know, hey, I got to be in at six, Tuesday through Friday. And and I, I know what's coming up Saturday. That's the only thing I look at my schedule for. I look at Saturday to see what am I doing because Saturday it's like, oh, well, if I'm doing this building, I have to come at this time. If I'm doing that building, I have to come at this time. It's the only thing I look at. So I look at, but I don't look at the rest of the week because it doesn't matter. I'm still coming at the same time. Well, it turns out that Tuesday night I had to go and work in a building that's really old. And because it's really old, it doesn't have any elevators. I kind of grandfathered in from before the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, 
And to just to say, this place just looks like it used to be a drug dealer's compound. It's this gorgeous. I mean, this place was like a mansion. It looks like it just got they, like this company bought this mansion and turned it into an office building. But it's gorgeous. But there's like three kind of separated buildings. You got to go up and down the stairs and all this stuff to and like, we're cleaning the carpet. Well, I got to clean carpet on the first and second floor. We've got to haul the machines up and down these stairs, jumping back and forth between buildings to do all this stuff. Well, this is a pain in the ass on any normal Tuesday. Now, add in broken ribs. Every single step was, I could feel them popping just like in my side. And it was you know, holding, you know, I've got a partner helping me, we're, but we're, you know, you know, team lifting. We're pulling a 80, 90 pound machine up these stairs. Meanwhile, my ribs are going snap, crackle, pop at every step. And we just got all, oh, I was just, I, I had told my boss before, I was like, hey, so here's what happened. <laughs> you know, I, you know, popcorn kernel ribs go snap, pop, you know, ribs are, are, are kind of screwy right now. Like, I'm here. I can work just letting you know if something goes, letting you know if something goes sideways tonight that, you know, I may, you know, I could aggravate this. I'm trying to take it easy, but it just happens to be that we were working in the worst possible building that I could have been working in for my ribs. That's the bitch of it. So about halfway through my night, I was like, nope. All of the up and down the stairs and everything just took too much of a strain on me. And this is medicated, by the way. And I I know what the pain of this is like unmedicated. I actually had to go through it last year. My doctor told me, take a day so that you know how, you know, what this, what like, you're, because I was self-medicated. I was like, I'm taking a leave because I've got this pain. Well, it was a, he wanted to know with the medications and everything how much pain was I actually in? How bad? Because I was medicated to such a point where I didn't know how bad I actually theoretically was. So I had a day without any medication. And I will just say that was the most excruciating pain in my life. And I've been beaten over the head with a baseball bat and nearly died. Broken ribs hurts more. Really? No bullshit. Just saying. So, yeah, I know what the pain level is like unmedicated. I'm not doing that shit again. So medicated, this started to become a problem and it started to become a, I can't breathe. And every step we take is a problem. And oh yeah, I'm feeling this now. I know because, you know, I've been dealing with this for a while. I know where, what point in the cycle of my pain meds they start wearing off. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is supposed to be a 12 hour pill. I can take another one at eight hours. Well, because of my metabolism, this shit starts wearing off in about five. After about five hours, I start feeling my pain meds wear off. And I, and I notice it. Add on the extra strain from work and I'm at about three hours and I can feel everything coming down. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm at about five hours. I've got at least three more hours before I can take anything else because, and, and that's the, you're not supposed to take anything for uh, 12 hours. It's supposed to last 12 hours. It says you can run it like eight after eight hours. You cannot take anything with up to eight hours. So I'm at five hours. I got three hours to go before I can take anything else. And I'm hurting. And I also know that I am on the end of where this is effective pain relief. And I'm about to start really feeling this wear off. And I'm like, I, I can't, I can't do it. And I end up having to call my boss and tell him like, yeah, I, I'm not going to make it because basically I would have had to go almost the rest of my work night unmedicated or without any further relief and uh 
couldn't. I just I couldn't get through it. And so I ended up going home early, which sucks because money, because you know you still got to work. Um, propping myself up on the couch so I can stay upright, and and I didn't wake up like an eighty year old man. I'll say that much, but. I'm definitely still feeling twingy today <laughs> and you know, it's, it's just the, oh God, it, it sucks that this happens in general, but then the fact to, to compound it with the fact that it was so much worsened by a damn piece of popcorn stuck in my throat that I went from, yeah, this is really a pain to, oh fuck, I can't move around today. Because of a coughing fit from a stupid piece of popcorn. Yeah. Story of my damn life. But, you know, as stupid as that is, I can think of some things that are stupider. So I'm going to take a break, play you some promos, and I will be back with some really stupid people in the news. Need an escape? Vanish into the depths of a magic forest. Head out on an interstellar repair mission. Travel back in time to change the future. Explore inside someone or something else. Meet dragons, werewolves, birds, bears, aliens, mermen, and a man with a fishbowl for a head. All in ten minutes or less every week. Tune in to 600 Second Saga for your weekly science fiction and fantasy escape. Hello, it's Heather from the Sunshine and Power Cuts podcast. In association with Geeks Rising from the 9th to the 16th of March or 10th to the 17th if you're here in New Zealand, 2019, we are hosting the first 2019 Sunshine Summit. It's a week of live streams with amazing content creators and the theme of celebrating connections. All of the details for the upcoming summit, as well as replays from our previous events and where the live streams will be happening, can be found at sunshinesummit.live. A huge thank you to the patrons of Sunshine and Power Cuts for making that possible. So check it out, and if you know the guests, we'd love for you to come and celebrate with us. And if they are new to you, come along, learn more about them, and we look forward to celebrating connections with you. Oh man, so I got a, I think I'll just say I got a Tahai for Jackass this week. A man in India wants to sue his parents for giving birth to him without his consent. Yeah, what the fuck? So apparently there's this whole thing. They're calling them anti-natalists who think that it's wrong to put an unwilling child through the, the troubles of life for the pleasure of the parents. The, the fuck? There, there's kind of, I guess, two arguments to this. One of them is the, the, the having more kids is a strain on the earth and the environment. And by having more kids, we are being irresponsible for environmental reasons. The other is the world is a horrible, terrible place. And who the hell are you to bring a child into this world and make them have to suffer through all of the pains of the world and force them to grow up and go to school and have a job? And they think that raising a child and forcing them to get an education and get a job is slavery. The fuck is you smoking? The that is really people actually think this. That now I understand those people who say I don't think we should have more kids because we're a strain on the environment. I can understand that argument. But to say how dare you give birth to a child without that child's consent? You are fucking stupid. You are just a friggin' idiot. What the hell logic are you going by 
where, and this is not even one of those, I mean, God, I, I'm sure somebody listening out there could say that this is like a pro-life or whatever the fuck kind of issue. This is not a case of, at one point is a person, a person. This is a case of babies don't have consent. This is a case of, you know, they're almost arguing in the favor of, of abortion for the sake of people shouldn't have babies because the world is terrible and you are because you wanted to have a baby and you wanted to go off and have sex and, and enjoy yourself and have a baby because you wanted to raise a baby. Well, the baby, maybe the baby didn't want to fucking be raised. Maybe the baby didn't want to be born into this world and the world sucks. And now you've put them through all this suffering for your pleasure. So you're a terrible person. And apparently this asshole plans to sue his parents who see, he says he's has a great relationship with the fuck. This guy says he has a great relationship with his parents, loves his parents, was raised very well, but he still plans to sue them for giving birth to him because he did not consent to being born. I'm sorry, kid. There wasn't a questionnaire. You know, do, how are we going to do that? We're going to sit there and start, you know, you're going to Morse code, you know, your, your kicks on, on mom's, uh, on fucking uterus and shit as when you're what, at what age do we ask the baby for consent? Do we have to wait until they have fingers? Wait until the baby has fingers and then say, Hey, I need a consent for your birth. Otherwise, you know, we're going to have to hold shit off. No, you fucking idiot. So, no, it just, it takes, it doesn't take two brain cells to figure out the flaw in this guy's argument. He's just a fucking idiot, but he's not the only one. That's the stupidest part. And apparently in India, this is a big thing. Not to, you know, shit on India, but it's just apparently a really big thing in India. If you want to go, again, you want to go the environmentalist route, the, hey, we need to dial back on having too many damn kids for environmental strain reasons. Fine. Fuck. Go for it. That makes sense. That's logical. That I, I can, I can, I can hear that argument and we can discuss that. This guy's a fucking moron. But speaking of fucking moron children, this one was fun just for the, I think you could have done better. 19 year old fakes his own kidnapping in attempt to blackmail his mother. Get this. For $130. Yeah. The fuck. Really? Kid? I say, yeah, 19 year old. And if you go and you watch the news, they're going to say 19 year old man. No fucking idiot kid. Uh, 19 year old in, in South Carolina. I don't know how long he was missing. But his mom gets a phone call from, you know, blocked call, uh, disguised voice saying that if she doesn't uh, give them, like, leave $130 in this mailbox at this location, they're going to kill the kid. Which, you know, when, what the fuck? $130? Are you, huh? And then, you know, apparently she could hear him struggling, air quotes in the back and whatever oh, I'm giving the money, blah, blah, blah. It's 130 fucking bucks. Literally you could, you could probably get that from knocking off a damn parking meter. Anyway, she gets kind of uh, curious because the address where they want the money deposited for the, the exchange is his dad's house. Yeah. So, you want me to go put $130 in my ex's uh, mailbox or you're going to kill my kid? Look, I'm pretty sure you got a credit card that's got more money than that. But they call the cops. The article doesn't say if she gave him the money. Considering it's only $130, bucks, i am pretty sure she probably just fucking threw the money over there. And I guess you know, later on when the police questioned him, he came clean and said, yeah, I, tried, I, I faked it just so I could get $130 bucks from my mom. Dude, fucking ask. Seriously. Because guess what? Now this asshole is going to jail. That's right. He is going to jail. 
if he is convicted of blackmail, which this is what basically is coming down to, he's he's getting charged with uh, kidnapping and blackmail and could face up to 10 years in prison and or up to five thousand dollars. Yeah. Throw the idiot in prison just for being a fucking idiot. Dude. The $130 scheme is about to cost you five grand and 10 years in prison. Dumb fuck. And I want to find out. Find the friend who was on the phone, too. Find that guy, too. Wrangle him up because, yeah, let's remember he had an accomplice. Either way, fuck, dude. Never mind the fact that you kidnapped yourself to, to extort money from your mother, which is fucked to begin with. Your dumbass didn't even ask for an amount of money that is worth the hassle. You ever hear the the phrase, uh, is the juice worth the squeeze? You you didn't get shit out of this, man. You just squoze a rotten orange because you ain't got shit. You got $130 out of your mom and you just ended up with 10 years in prison and a $5,000 fine. You'll have a net negative of four thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars yay math i can do podcast math people most people can't sorry (laughs) but yeah really what the fuck if you're gonna if you're gonna fucking blackmail somebody extort money out of somebody get a good amount fuck he could have at least said hey if i'm gonna go to prison it's gonna cost me at least five thousand dollars plus legal fees so I need at least $25,000 before I can, I need $25,000 that I got to extort from these people before I be not killed so that you can cover your ass when you go to prison. No, you are net negative, dumbass. That's the, and you going to prison because you dumb shit and you fucking came clean about it. Seriously, just ask your mom for the fucking money. Ask your friend or dad or who somebody fucking... It's 130 bucks, man. That is below the limit to get a personal loan. You could have just got a fucking Capital One credit card. Shit. That's all. Seriously. You could have got $300 if you just signed up for a Capital One credit card. Trust me. They give them to everybody. Fucking jackass. (laughs) Of course, links to those stories and all of the past show notes, all of that fun jazz and everything else I talk about, you know, it's all at oddadoutpodcast.com. While you're there, hit me up on all the social medias. They're all there. Subscribe to the show. Get yourself a t-shirt or a coffee mug because you know you want one. I've got mugs and shirts of and hoodies because it, it's cold outside, polar vortex and all that shit. So do all that fun stuff while you're there and share it with a friend. Remember, share. Sharing is caring, right? And speaking of sharing is caring, it's time for this week's recommended listening feature, The Wayward Podcast. <laughs> recommended listening. <laughs> Sometimes you think people need to hear you, and they don't. And sometimes when that happens, you realize there are other people that are still listening. So you don't need to stop making noise. This is the Wayward Podcast. And we are making some fucking noise. This is Brianna Buckmaster. And this is Kim Rhodes. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brianna Buckmaster. You are. You totally are. <laughs> and I'm so, Kim Rhodes. Rhodes? Is that right? Oh, Rhodes and Buckmaster. Buckmaster and Rhodes. Um, welcome to our podcast. Yeah. We thought we would spend this episode of the podcast... In Kim's closet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're spending every episode of this podcast in Kim's closet. We are. Until we are. we're rich and famous and we're all in our mansions on a hill. So my kid is 10. She's 
identifies female at this point. And uh, she loves the Avengers. Mm -hmm. So we were playing this game where I would sit in a chair and she would run out into the room as an Avenger, mm-hmm. and I had to guess which Avenger she was. So she ran out it's and she game. went, not today, soldier. And I was like, it's Captain America. And she ran out and she said, uh, Hulk smash. And I was like, it's kind of a giveaway, but that that's Hulk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a yeah. And um, she did a couple more. And then she ran out and she just like ran across the room. I was like, uh, you got to help me out. And she goes back and she just runs across the room again. I said, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? I said, sh- and she goes, Oh, I'm I'm Black Widow. I said, well, you've got to say something. And she said, she doesn't say anything. She's a girl. Oh. <gasps> mm, table flip. Total Shirt table. Rip I was like, open. fuck. People still, I still need this. Yeah. Like, this is not, so this podcast, and we talked about what do we want it to be. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be two people in Dowing you with our wisdom. Knowledge, yeah. This is about shit we need. Mm -hmm. And how did we find it? How do we continue to find it? Mm -hmm. How do we find it from each other? The community who's listening. And hopefully at some point we will be able to have other people in to teach us things. Yes. But the wayward community has never been about we've arrived. It's about the journey. Yes. And it's about being off the path, being a little lost, Mm -hmm. a little unusual. Maybe this isn't the way everybody else has done their journey, but this is the way we're doing it. Yeah. And And it's about taking those things that do scare you or that you do uh, feel ashamed about and flipping them on their backs and going, yeah, I'm scared and I'm going to do it anyway. Or, yeah, I'm imperfect and yet I'm still wonderful. Yeah. And and embracing those things and seeing what happens because life's fucking short, man. We are also not the kind of women who grew up that way or are are raising our families that way. We're not wealthy women. We are both supporting our families on an artist's wage. Dude, we're doing a podcast in my closet. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but fuck yeah, we're doing a podcast in Gibbs closet. Yeah. See, even this podcast is way worse. <laughs> it's totally right? We're super grateful for you guys, and we hope that this podcast shows you that. And it also shows you that just because people say no to you does not mean you have to stop. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, it's, you know, when you said it's about, it's about using your voice. Yeah. And I think the thing about using your voice is first you have to give yourself permission to find it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that takes the wrong doors being closed in your face Mm -hmm. before you go, oh, not only is this one unlocked, it actually goes where my soul wants to go. Yeah. Uh, We love you guys. We hope you're as excited as we are. And I can't wait to see what we discover together. Me too. Thanks, Brianna Buckmaster. Thanks, Kim Rhodes. Bye. The Wayward Podcast, hosted by Kim Rhodes and Brianna Buckmaster, who you may know from Supernatural, whereas the name for the show kind of derives from a spinoff that they were supposed to have, and there's a whole big complicated kind of thing behind the name if you listen to the first episode, or if you're familiar with the Wayward Sisters uh, spinoff that was supposed to happen with Supernatural. You'll get it. And the whole Wayward Sisters um, movement and all of that, everything. Uh, Too much for me to go into. The first episode of the podcast, for the most part, covers it all. All that aside, this is a very rare exception for me because they're celebrities. I, I honestly, and if you've checked, go through my recommended listening section. I don't have a lot of celebrities. Now that I think about it, the only other celebrity podcast that I've ever recommended was RuPaul. Really? For the most part, I I don't listen to the big, you know, celebrity podcast because for the most part, they're all just big cash grabs. It's, Hey, this company wants to uh, make money. Let's give Shaq a podcast. Let's give Snooki a podcast. A lot of them, or it's just not something I'm I'm so much interested in. 
It's people who go in with an established audience and get millions of downloads because they're famous and they are making a lot of money doing the show. Not them. This show is them expressing themselves and explaining things and giving their input and their opinions and their viewpoints on various subjects because they choose to and and getting those kind of ideas and those those things out and talking about uh self-care talking about health talking about family talking about sex and boy you listen to the sex one that one got more you learn so much about these women just really like deep <laughs> You probably learn more about them than you necessarily want to, <laughs> but <clears throat> you also learn, I mean, it's, it's, it's very much about empowerment and understanding and, and the way they, they tackle the different subjects. It's you, it, it's very, it's hard for me to put into words. And you know me, I I can talk and talk and talk, but it's hard for me to put into words to describe how exactly that they are able to really just, they, they talk about so many things just so genuinely. And a lot of it feels very much like when I, you know, come up with whatever I'm talking about here, it's what is going on in their world. And we need to talk about this. Like, uh, around Thanksgiving, they did a, a a episode about family and the way you kind of, you know, you love your family, but sometimes you hate your family <laughs> and sort of the, the way you are, you have to deal with them and the way you treat certain people and things like that. And I get the, the uh, episode about sex and they talk about the attitude toward sex and the expectations between males and females and you know, the way you, you talk about sex towards your sons versus your daughters and their experiences with sex when they were growing up and, and really no subject is off the table. I mean, they, what's it? Their third, fourth episode, they were talking about their periods. <laughs> it's a couple of women talking about, you know, life and things, but, not gross. It wasn't, but you know, it's it, they, they, food and dealing with pain. And that one was, again, it's very much a case of what is going on in the world. Um, Kim had a, uh, accident fell off a horse and now she is currently in a back brace, which got bedazzled by, uh, Samantha Smith, who is also on supernatural, um, <laughs> which is just adorable. <laughs> but, like so many other podcasters and indie people like myself, I, I don't do this in a closet, but they're, they're literally sitting there. And if you ever follow them on Instagram, they're sitting in Kim's closet recording this. And it's yeah, like, I mean, they said it right there, but it's, it's, it's honest and it's real and it's them expressing themselves and they're not being preachy. They're just telling their their feelings and their thoughts and you know their their dealings with the world and and how to deal with pain and family and and pressure and work and eating healthy and you know you know dealing with you know beauty standards and emotional things and that's it's so there's so much to it but they're all only really compact episodes because they're only maybe 20, 30 minutes. And it's kind of funny because they joke about, because of the fact that they're podcasting in a closet, it gets stuffy. So guess what? They don't last very long. One, you don't want to get preachy. And if I did, if I didn't have the segments broken up the way I do, I probably, this show wouldn't be as long as it is. Maybe you don't want it that long. I don't know. But they they cover everything. Sometimes I feel like, no, I want more. I want you to keep going. I look up and they're like, oh, well, that's going to be it. I'm like, well, no, keep going. I want you to talk more. But that's also a great 
you know, a sign of a great show is that you want them to keep going. But, you know, they, they're very compact. Like I said, 20, 30 minutes max. I don't think they've had one over 30 minutes. And they, they get to you. They, you, you, it's very uplifting. It's very empowering. A lot of the things they say, and a lot of it, I mean, it's very much a ob- uh, case of you look at it. This is kind of their level of therapy too. This is them sitting there kind of getting things out. And it's, it's a couple of friends sitting there. Hey, you're going through some stuff. You need to talk about this. And maybe it's the pressure of being on mic that they'll, they'll open up their hearts and, and really express themselves to get into things that maybe in other cases they wouldn't have. And it's, it's kind of a, you know, for people that do a much more free flowing, emotional thought train of thought type thing, like I do even here, it's, it's, it's very much a case of, of kind of a therapy, getting your, your heart and your mind and everything and letting it go out into the world for other people to, to see and hear and, and understand. And maybe they, they will see the way you feel about something and they'll, and, and and they'll have that connection with you. And it's really great. And listening to these, these women who are, you know, to me, I still look at them as like, they're, they're famous. These are two women that, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, Kim Rhodes was the mom on Zach and Cody way back in the day and you look at her and now she's uh sheriff jody mills and she's badass and but she's you know she's a tv star she's you know to me she's famous and i realized she's not you know brad pitt level celebrity you know super rich and famous and she can get whatever the hell she wants because of her name but there are people who would see her walking down the street and know exactly who she is so you look at her and you're like, you're famous. But then you listen to the show and you realize, oh, she's just a person. She's got insecurities and she's got issues and she's got trauma in her past. And she's got all of these things just like me and they're normal people. And, you know, I, it, it makes you realize that these celebrity people are normal humans just like you and me and okay maybe not me there's not too much normal about me but it's 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 i don't say it's relieving i don't know the right way to put it but it, you feel more connected to them and you feel like they're approachable they're human and they're really awesome and I don't care men, women, giraffes. I don't care. You should go listen to this show. It really, it is, it's another one of those where it's very empowering and very cathartic maybe, but listening to them talk about the different things and their, their, their views. And it doesn't get super political and they, maybe they'll take a political shot here or there, whatever. But it doesn't get super political. It doesn't get super preachy. It doesn't, you don't feel bad at any point. You just feel like, and I'll look, I was like, yeah, I get it. I, I, and you're right along with them. It's like, yeah. Or you feel like, oh, wow. And there's just so many of those, oh, wow moments that I just, I think I I'm, I'm having trouble finding the words to describe this show other than to say it's a great show. It's not overpowering. It's not preachy. It's not naggy. It's not all super pretentious because they're actors. They're not like that. They're super down to earth. And it's the, I feel like they would be doing this show exactly as it is the very same way with the very same heart, whether or not they're on TV. And that's the best thing I can tell you. They are not the super pretentious celebrities. It is Brianna and Kim hanging out in Kim's closet, talking about whatever 
<laughs> with Kim's bedazzled uh, back brace and Brianna telling her that she shouldn't get back on the fucking horse so damn early. The doctor told her she needed to rest. <laughs> but you can check them out. It is the Wayward Podcast at waywardpodcast.podbean.com. Again, links in the show notes as always. And of course, the full recommended listening list is right there at odddadoutpodcast.com. If you have a recommended show for me, something you want me to check out, maybe something you want me to review on the show later. I told you I want to branch out into doing more formal reviews of shows that I don't necessarily uh, listen to myself. Uh, drop me a line, hit me up on the Facebook, Twitter, at Odd Dad Out. Of course, show at OddDadOutPodcast.com. And a big thank you to the Patreon supporters who are so amazing and willing to support this show financially. Heather Welch from Sunshine and Power Cuts. We'll hear more from her coming up later in the month. And Lisa and Sam from I Shake My Head. They are damn funny. You need to be listening to them. Thank you, all of you. You're great. And if you want to have your name read on this show and be awesome like them and maybe get yourself some stickers or coffee mugs or or other such fun things that are out there, you can go to patreon.com slash odddad out and sign up. And for as little as a dollar a month, you will also get my any of the extra crap that I record, any audiobooks that I throw up there, and the monthly guest episodes with all of the extra bonus pre-show, post-show jibber jabber chit chat that we do and you will get those early you will get all of those ahead of everybody else with all the extras you're welcome all right enough of all the the spiel because honestly i don't know if you can tell my lungs aren't really agreeing with me talking this much this week thank you for putting up with my randomness i will be back next week with more of whatever the hell is going on in my head And until then, I am Adam Higgins, the Odd Dad out. Thank you and good night.